Welcome to the third EnviroTube News. Today we're looking at fire. Fire is a huge issue in Karingai. There's too much, there's too little, people are concerned. We're going to be looking at how it affects bush care sites and how the environmental levy is helping. We're going to be going to Warrigal Road bush care site and it's quite interesting because two years ago we had a hazard reduction burn there. So we're going to be able to look at the vegetation and see what's actually happened. Just a few days ago at Darnley Oval, there was a hazard reduction fire done by the RFS, the Rural Fire Service. So it's going to be very interesting to see the effects of a hazard reduction fire on a bush care site. Here we are at the Darnley Oval bush care site. Typical Hawkesbury sandstone, look around. There's banksias, there's scribbly gums, there's aloe casuarinas, the whole gamut of vegetation you'd expect to find on this sort of site. We also have a lot of potosporums. These plants, they're typical of an area that hasn't been burnt for a while, and that's bad for biodiversity. You need a fire for these plants to reproduce. The Hawkesby sandstone plants must have fire. It's a natural event, and without it, there's big trouble. Therefore, we often do ecological burns, not just burns to reduce fuel load. Just a couple of metres away, on the same bush care site, we had a hazard reduction burn. Now, to the person who doesn't understand Australian ecology, this probably looks like World War II. In fact, this is the bush on its process of regeneration, of rehabilitation. If you look at the ground, nothing. Ash, charcoal, not a green thing, not a skerrick. I know a lot of people are going to see this site and they're going to be concerned. Oh my God, look at the devastation, look at the destruction. How could council have anything to do with something like this? Well, I tell you, you're only seeing half the story. Yes, there is a lot of destruction, but it's like a phoenix. Through the death of the phoenix comes the rebirth. We're going to see this whole blackened area come alive. So kookaburras are now looking for animals displaced by fire, animals that are caught out in the open. They're going to grab a whole range of reptiles, little lizards, the whole gamut. Brush yeah. turkey, straight ahead. Uh -huh. There's another. Oh, they're really going too. That's a female. Now, if you look at these brush turkeys, you can actually see these are two females because they don't have that big wattle in front of their neck. Because they've just got a short little collar wattle, that's the main identifying feature for a female. Well, for all those people who think that hazard reduction burns just cause death and destruction, we've seen a kookaburra, we've seen two brush turkeys, there's magpies just a couple of metres away. This area is still very, very good for wildlife because we burnt in a mosaic pattern. That means we didn't burn all the bush in this area, we just burnt a section of it. This is something interesting. Just behind us, we have a Banksia serrata, old man Banksia. That's one of its uh, cones. This is how this plant breathes. Without fire, you wouldn't have the cone open and spread the seeds. From the ruin, the death of the parent, comes the rebirth of the child. We're going to take you to a bush care site that was burnt two years ago. Now the environmental levy paid for pre-fire weeding and post-fire weeding and you're going to see the difference. It's absolutely phenomenal. Two years ago this was blackened. Two years ago this was dead. Now look at it. I can't believe it. Just behind me I've got some of my favourite plants, Portoneus tipularis, those beautiful yellowy orangey flowers. Magnificent. Just over here we've got an egg and bacon plant. Council spends $5,000 a year to help keep the weeds out of this area. The Bush Care Group builds on this work and it's council with the community in a collaboration making a difference. And when you look at the wildflowers around me, I think it's worthwhile. Look at this plant. Because of the fire, a whole lot of plants like this Portoneus tipularis have burst into flower. This is one of the real beauties of the bushland around Sydney. And yet, do I ever see it in a garden in Sydney? Never. I've got no idea why. Perhaps it's hard to propagate but this is the sort of plant that should be in every garden in Karingai, rather than the ubiquitous azalea. One year ago, this site looked just like Darnley Oval. This is Bannockburn Oval. It's actually where we've got some blue gum high forest, probably one of Australia's rarest plant communities. Council is spending $10,000 a year to keep this area looking good after the fire. Just to my left, we have some kangaroo apple, and in front of me, we have some Acacia terminalis and a sea, a sea of ground covers, predominantly at the moment, uh, native geranium. The regeneration on this site just shows the worth of a bushfire. The native geraniums, they grow really, really well. 
tend to die back after a bit, but they do have a nice little pink flower. Kangaroo apple is a solanum, it's a native plant and it's related to nicotine and tomatoes. And in amongst the native geranium, we have some entelasia growing, entelasia marginata. If you have a look at it, it's got beautiful right angle leaves. When you get a whole clump of it growing, it looks really spectacular. It's quite common, but unfortunately it's one of the unknowns of Australian grasses. Fire was used as an ecological burn. There wasn't any real danger to, to properties or people, but the bushland really did need uh, to have a fire to make it healthy. And when you look at the regeneration that's occurred, it's really been worthwhile. Thanks for watching EnviroTube 3. Number four will be along in a month's time. We've looked at fire this month, and I hope you've got some insight into what actually happens on a bushland site when a hazard reduction burn occurs. Look, fire can be a problem when there's houses and people's lives involved. But a lot of Australian bush needs fire to survive. There's a word called regeneration. It's not 10,000 hectares destroyed. It could be 10,000 hectares regenerated. I hope you can see this is the sort of work we're doing in Karingai to keep the environment healthy.